Hey everybody and welcome back to EcoVenture GSO. Glad you're here. We're having a very special episode. This is our spring episode. You can tell that because it's snowing. But in North Carolina, if you wait a little bit, the weather changes. So tomorrow it's supposed to be 70 degrees. Fortunately, we're filming today. Now, for our spring episode, we're gonna do a couple of really cool things. We're gonna show you some gardening stuff. We're gonna show you how uh, Greensboro is getting ready for the public to come back with different plantings and, get, and all that kind of stuff. We'll show you how nature's waking up after a long winter, and we're gonna show you how you can do some cool gardening at home. But even more importantly than that, we're gonna do something even better. Our very favorite recurring character, Crystal's with us. You know her, you love her, and she's gonna be co-hosting with us. Crystal, wanna say hi to everybody? Hi everybody, I'm Crystal. I work at Lake Higgins for the city of Greensboro, and I have the pleasure to work with Michael on this great show. Yeah, remember you said pleasure, you can't, you know, take that back, right? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. So we're gonna go take you on a, a really fun gardening adventure, and uh, you guys ready to go? You good? Yep, let's yep. go. Awesome. One of our stops today during our spring episode is Greensboro's Bog Gardens. Bog Gardens are a wonderful natural walkthrough with all kinds of different plants and animal species for you to enjoy. We're gonna walk through and see how nature's kind of waking up after the long winter. It doesn't really look like it with all the snow happening, but believe it or not, spring is pretty much upon us. Now, some plants will uh, bud and bloom at different times of the year to take advantage of the different pollinators that'll be out at that time. So even though it's snowing, it's still kind of chilly, we're gonna walk through and there are a lot of things flowering and budding out and it's gonna be a really nice, uh, nice time. When you come to any park, they typically will have a sign at the entrance and a sign giving you some basic information so that you can know where you are and know what you're gonna expect to see. On the back side of this, there's some information about what kind of plants and um, flowers you're going to find blooming in the gardens here. And this gives you some information about some different bird and bird eggs that you might see here. So we're here at one end of the bog garden. Uh, we've got a lovely waterfront. Uh, view behind us. It's really, really cool. Some of the trees are starting to bud and there's some ducks and geese out, which is always great. You love coming out here. You love enjoying nature, seeing the plants and seeing some of the wildlife. It's a great time of year that because a lot of the birds, especially some of the ducks and the geese are starting to pair up and nest right about now. So, you know, another month or two months or so, we'll have cute little ducklings and goslings pretty much everywhere we go. So it'll be a lot of fun. They're wonderful animals. You really want to enjoy them from afar. You always look at them, always enjoy their presence, but there's a couple things you want to re always remember. So one of the things is you should not feed the geese. They have a sign here that says, please don't feed the geese and ducks. One of the reasons for that is because you want the ecosystem to be strong. And if you are introducing other foods into the ecosystem that birds are not learning to eat for themselves and that can hurt our ecosystems. You should always feed the Mikey though, when you get that chance, just saying. <laughs> A couple other things while we're out here. While we're walking around, there's really cool plants. We've got the ducks, we've got the geese. If you look to the side over here, we have got a big stand of bamboo. Bamboo is really cool, it's really neat, it's incredibly invasive. Um, some people plant it in their yards or in their areas and bamboo will send out um, shoots every year and it will basically overtake an area. It's very, very hard to eradicate and can quickly choke an area and push out the native wildlife. So unless you have a pet panda, which I'm guaranteeing almost none of you do, you probably don't want a lot of bamboo in your yard unless it's in a container or something like that. So as we're walking through the bog garden, guys, we found a pair of uh, very cooperative little friends. Right over here, we've got a pair of mallard ducks hanging out. Um, they're really neat in a lot of different ways, but what we're gonna talk about real quick, these guys, ready for your uh, scientific term of the day, are sexually dimorphic. That means that the two sexes, the males and the females, look very, very different. So you can easily tell who's a boy and who's a girl. The male is the one kind of closer to us with the green head, dark brown chest, the kind of grayish back. The female is the one, is the one that's behind a little higher on the land with the light brown and uh, dark brown modeling. So it's really easy to tell the boys and the girls apart. These ducks are really, really cool and uh, glad we found them.
at the bog garden they have a really cool feature it's an owl box and it's right up here on this tree when we were talking to Steve and Stacy yesterday we found out that there was a mama owl and two baby owls in the box and somewhere around here the dad owl is keeping watch did you see him Michael I haven't seen him yet but I'm looking for him okay so what kind of owls do you think are going to be typically found natively in this owl box? The ones that fly. Probably. And have feathers. <laughs> Most likely since all the owls have feathers. Right. By the size of that opening and the size of the box, I'm guessing that there's barred owls living in there. Now, not barred, I know they kind of sound alike, but barred, B-A-R-R-E-D. They're a really large kind of a gray-brown owl. They're really, really cool and they get that very distinctive kind of who, who cooks for you kind of a, kind of a hoot. They're a really neat bird. They eat a lot of the rodents and that kind of stuff in the area. And they're, they're wonderful to have around. Okay, so when you're walking around the bog garden, or any garden in fact, it's really, really cool. Sometimes they're labeled and a lot of plants aren't labeled, but Here's a wonderful thing that we can do now. Information technology is a great thing, so you can kind of meld old and new. So this is a really cool plant. Not everybody's gonna know what it is, so there are apps that you can actually put on your phone. Some of them are uh, plant ID apps. You can get bird calls, anything like that. I like one called Plant Snap. It's great. There's also iNaturalist and some other ones you can do some searching for. All you've gotta do, download the app, take a picture, and it's going to identify the plant for you. And it's really, really cool. And a lot of the time, it'll not only give you the name of the plant and where it's found, but a whole history of the plant. This is a species of Trillium, which is really, really neat. Gives you a whole lot on it. Oh, and evidently it's toxic. So I'm not gonna eat this. You shouldn't either, okay? But anyway, you can do that with any of the plants that you're not sure about. Take pictures of the leaves, the flowers, and then you can do some ID and learn all about it as you're walking. All right, so when you're walking around, guys, you're going to see a lot of plants that are either brand new for the, for the season or that have made it through the winter and are kind of putting some new growth out. So right here, you can see these guys. Some of these leaves are kind of a darker color, some, a lot of wear and tear on them. This is last year's growth. Right here, it's all bright green, bright and fresh. It's all new growth. All the plants are kind of turning over, coming back to life for the spring, which, yeah, I know it doesn't look like spring in the, in the camera, but it is. Hey Mikey, yeah. spring is in the air. Yes it is. No, just kidding, but come over here and look at this fern. Okay. Well, that's cool. Look at these are the new leaves coming out, these little curly cues. Yep, that's absolutely it. That's a whole new fern coming right out of the spring. Good that's find, amazing. Crystal. That's amazing. All right, everybody, so now, through the power of positive thinking and my naturally sunny disposition, it stopped snowing. So we took a little bit of a trip. We're now at the Brown Recreation Center in the Ivy Gardens, and we're going to talk to my good friend, Akeem White, about some of the gardening stuff that you guys can do at home to kind of get ready for this spring. Akeem, thanks for having us. Look. Thanks for having me out. Anytime, Al. Yes. So, you want to tell us about how people can kind of get their garden beds ready for, uh, for spring? Absolutely. So, <clears throat> one of the first things you want to worry about as far as soil is the composition of your soil. So you always want to make sure it's fertile, it's aerated, and you don't want it to be too clamped together because a lot of times when we don't properly till, a lot of people say when you till, you kill, so you want to watch out how far and deep you go because we have a lot of earthworms that are very good to the soil. So you want to make sure the composition of the soil is always good, clear, uh, test the soil before you start planting too to see how the phosphorus levels, the nitrogen, uh, the pH balance because also how you want the body to be pH, you also want your soil to be pH as well. Um, and also talking about the aeration, you want to have little holes or make some spacing in the soil so the water can go to the roots and then when you put your seedlings in it can be strong and efficient. Okay, great, great. Yeah, that's the one that will, you know, the, the water, the air, all that to get to everything. Absolutely. All living things need it. Absolutely. Okay, great. Very cool. 
All right, so now I see you've already got some stuff planted in here. Yes. It's a little chilly, but it's the beginning of spring. Absolutely. Um, so are there different plants that are better for this time of year than other times of year? Yes. So what would people want to kind of plant now that'll do better okay. uh, for them? Yeah, so what we did was we did a combination of some winter type spring plants. So we have some uh, bok choy in this one, some collard greens, uh, and some kale as well, because as we can see, it was just snowing this morning, so we still have a frost to get over. So in about 60 to 65 days after we get a yield and flowering from these plants, we'll change and then we'll go into our summer plant direction. Okay, cool. So we'll have these for a little while. Absolutely. We'll kind of harvest what we what we can, and then when they're done, it's a little too warm, we put new plants in. Absolutely. That's great, that's great. So Absolutely. some leafy greens and stuff like that is yes. what the people want to go with now. Absolutely. Plant them in and enjoy them and uh, make all kinds of good salads and stuff that I, I don't eat, but you know, <laughs> other people do. Absolutely. All right, cool, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, do you have any other cool tips or tricks or anything like that? Uh, I would just say, make sure you get your compost started very early because compost is really going to add to the nutritionist level of your soil. So a cover crop will be really good, like in, this, in the, uh, the winter time once it gets really, really cold, because when you put a cover crop or you put any type of mulch mm -hmm. over top of your soil, it keeps the soil level and it keeps it at a certain temperature. So what this means is when you come back and you get it ready for the season, you can efficiently attack it the way you want to because it won't be all cloggy and right, right. you know it won't be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, rocky, because the soil will turn into uh, gravel after a while. It'll be nice and smooth and Absolutely. nutrient rich and all ready for all the new plants. Absolutely. Perfect, that sounds yeah. great. Hey, thanks very much, man. I'm no sure problem. the people at home are gonna really love all these tips. Yes, thank you for having me out. Yeah, anytime, thank buddy, thank you. All right. Absolutely. So now we're here at Gateway Gardens, which is absolutely an amazing, wonderful, beautiful place. We're gonna meet my good friend, Derek Harmon. He's the supervisor here, and he's gonna tell us a little bit more about the garden. Derek. Hey, Mike, how you doing good today? Buddy. Good, buddy, thanks for having us out. Thank you, appreciate you coming. Good to see you again. Oh, right back at you. So as you can see, we are uh, in the middle of getting ready for our uh, big event on uh -huh. April 27th, okay. this is a Saturday. It's called Grooving in the Garden. Sounds like fun. We're gonna have a few big acts, uh, West End Mambo. Okay and uh, some other ones that are coming out pretty soon, uh, so look for details shortly. I definitely, absolutely, it sounds like a lot of fun. So tell me also, I know you have the big event coming up, but you're probably getting ready because spring's here. Yes, I sir. I know it snowed this morning, it's a little rainy now, but spring's here, you're getting ready. Um, this stuff doesn't come up on its own, you've got to work at it, right? Yes, sir, as you can see, we've been putting out mulch for probably the last three or four weeks or so. Okay. Uh, we put about 150 yards out here. Um, my house is just Just into the springtime. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, it takes uh, my staff and myself to uh, get it ready to go to make sure it's tip-top shape before the spring season. As you can see, things are starting to bloom. Uh, grass is starting to green up. Uh, all we need is some warmer temperatures and we'll be ready to go. All right, Derek, so this is another really cool feature that I've never seen anywhere else. So why don't we want to tell us about this? Yes, let's take a little tour. Okay. This is what we call is our uh, maze. Uh, it's a fun little interactive uh, kind of obstacle for kids. They come through here and they just start running and taking uh, the little, you know, detours and so to speak off the pass okay. and they kind of just keep on going all the way around and this is kind of like a uh, these will grow up a little bit higher, these uh -huh. ligustrums, so it'll make it where it kind of cuts them off from the outside. So it's its own garden in a garden, okay. basically. So will you let it get above the, uh, the, the head level of over the next couple of years? We'll, we'll let them get up to, we like to keep them about four to five foot high. Okay. Anything higher than that maybe becomes a safety issue, so we don't want to get them too kid where we want parents to actually be able to sit down and and enjoy the garden and right. actually let their kids run okay. and play and they can still kind of keep an eye on them, so to speak, and not be kind of okay. so, so, sectioned off. So, so there's no minotaur in here to eat them, right? No. Uh, okay. no. Can we get one? Sure. Okay, cool. Excellent. Another little aspect that we have with the garden is these uh, letters, the little decorative letters. Yeah, and, I've seen them all over the place. And, They're great. Uh, a lot of people will sponsor them through uh, Greensboro Beautiful to raise money for the gardens. 
okay. and uh, some activities around the gardens and plants and so on and so forth. That's so cool. this T actually stands for trumpet vine, which is on this trellis. Okay. Or you could say trellis, however you want to. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, we have some other ones. A is for apples and so on okay. and so forth. That's amazing. And of course, you see we have our lovely artwork, okay. butterfly structures. Yeah. Um, they were all done by different artists. Uh, a lot of this stuff was done actually or redone by Jim Gallucci, okay. who was a local, well-known, renowned artist. Sure, I'd be glad to. So what we have here was uh, a project that we've done, Greensboro Beautiful did a couple years ago, is uh, again by Jim Gallucci. He, would, he made, actually custom made these apples. And these are actually interactive piece that children can climb in and play on and sit in. And every now and then you'll catch people, you'll come up and catch people like, they'll catch you off guard because they're sitting in there reading or just kind of hanging out or on their cell phone or whatever. Sure. So we're always adding different features to the garden. So come check us out and try to find what's new. So Derek, this is a really super cool area and I bet when it gets really hot, this is a nice shady, what kind of plant is this? Trumpet it vine is, again? that's the trumpet vine again. And then down further we have honeysuckle. So eventually this will take over this whole this whole structure, what we call the uh, alphabet arch, uh, or caterpillar, excuse me, uh, that was another piece of artwork. <laughs> this is another uh, piece of artwork that we have here at Gateway. Uh, and on a nice sunny day, the sun actually comes through these uh, uh, skylights, so to speak, and puts different colors on the sidewalk, and it looks pretty neat. Well, that sounds really fun. I can't wait to get back in the summertime or maybe even just a sunny spring day to see those colors shine through. Definitely. So Derek, this is a really, really cool setting. I bet you do a lot of great events out here. We do. We do a lot of events at Gateway. Uh, come Saturday, April 27th, yeah. we're going to have our annual Grooving in the Garden event uh, with uh, live music, food trucks, mm -hmm. uh, some vendors. It's a free event. Come out and have a good time. There's plenty of uh, shuttle parking at the uh, uh, Nano Science Center, and we'll shuttle you over here, have a good time, and come back. Very cool. That sounds great. Uh, also, we're doing uh, on Saturday, June 1st, we're going to do a uh, drone rodeo RC expo. Okay. We're going to have uh, some different uh, people demonstrating uh, drones, uh, some tiny whoops, some people will be able to fly some of the smaller ones. And some RC cars will be able to, you know, purchase RC uh, parts and so on and so forth. We're going to have plenty of vendors, some food trucks, so that'll be a free event as well. Cool. Come on out and have a good time. Also, uh, the first Sunday in every July, we always have a Musip, which is Sunday evening in the park. Uh, okay. Tracks several people on our great lawn up top of All the right. uh, And that's a musical garden. event, correct? Yes, sir, okay. that is correct. Very cool. Put on by Parks and Rec again, as usual. Got the city that department, you know? Yes, sir. Okay, very cool. Well, Derek, man, thanks for showing us. Thanks, thanks for, for having me, Mike. I really? appreciate it. Yeah, it's a pleasure great. to have you. It was great being out All here. Right. It's a wonderful setting. Can't wait to come back and play Definitely. again. Definitely. Good to see you, buddy. You too. Thanks, Take man. it easy. This is a really fun episode, right, Crystal? I think so. We saw the Bog Garden. And the Gateway Garden. Right, and we hit the Brown Rec Center and you got hypothermia, so <laughs> it's been a really fun spring episode. I think so. Yeah. Can't wait to do it next time. I know, exactly. Thank you so much for co-hosting with me and uh, enjoying the adventure. Absolutely. And the snow and the rain and the hail. It's been great. It sure has. Yep. So next time, join us for Eco Venture GSO. Thanks for watching.